crew there on the main street, Port Hayden. We all lived out here. Christensen had a house right over there, but it got all the year old, all washed away. While we're here in Port Hyden, we're studying erosion and trying to determine the rates of change. But one of the big things we want to look at is why is this shoreline eroding so quickly? It's really a unique location. Uh, it, it is similar to the north slope of Alaska where you have these massive rates of erosion due to that permafrost. Here we have other factors that are contributing. One of which is the fact that Port Hyden sits directly adjacent to Antiochek volcano, which erupted about 3,500 years ago and deposited all of this pumice. And pumice is a volcanic rock that is really porous. You can see all of the air holes in it. And because of that, it's actually really buoyant in the ocean. And so when the ocean waves come and smash into the bluff, it actually will just float out these big chunks of pumice and leads to these dramatic rates of erosion. So on average, our, our um, numbers show that we're having anywhere from 20 to 30 feet of erosion per year. But during one major storm event, that could be magnified and we can have up to 100 feet of erosion during just one storm event. So the pumice sediments in the bluff are one of the big factors. And if you look at this bluff, that's what it's made out of. Pumice, a little bit of sand, and pumice is just really light. So that's going to lead to some of those really high rates of erosion. There are islands offshore that have been migrating um, and moving away from the area that we see the most erosion. the coastline in the past have now welded on to a shoreline further down. Now we see waves impacting the coastline um, much more frequently and causing more erosion. So somewhere around the 1970s we see this shift in erosion where the rates are much higher than they used to be. Now one of the other major factors that people have been hearing a lot about is the decline in sea ice in the Bering Sea. And as in other areas in the Bering, Port Hyden uh, is affected by that. And so when sea ice is actually present, it serves as this really wonderful natural seawall that basically attenuates and blocks all of that wave energy from reaching the bluff. But recently, uh, when sea ice in the past used to form as early as November and December, it's not really forming until December, January. And so that prime storm season in November and December, there's no natural seawall buffering this shoreline. And therefore you have all of the wave energy being expelled onto the bluff. We've got this, uh goldfish lake we we call it uh, if you look from the air you can see it's shaped like a goldfish it's got a little tail <laughs> but we're just about ready to lose it it's been a great resource for us uh, uh, subsistence duck hunting uh, you, uh, the kids have played with this lake I, when I came here in 88 I you know I remember kids playing in the lake and so the It'll be just a, it'll be sad to see it go. So here's Goldfish Lake. We're at the north part right now. 
Uh, this lake spreads out over a mile, and uh, we have one camera set here on the north end, and it's overlooking the region we're standing on, which is probably the thinnest part of the bluff, where the bluff goes from the lake out to the ocean. And we've got another camera almost a mile that way on the other side of the lake, and that's another really thin section, about as thin as here. It's also this road gravel, so it's been devegetated, which might have some influence on erosion rates, and we're gonna find out. These cameras are snapping pictures every hour, every day, and we're just waiting, counting it down. So we'll see what happens. Everything used to happen down here. When I first came here in 88, uh, this was, everybody lived down in the old village and it was, it was just a hopping little place. I'd get here in the springtime and all the boats would be lined up and everybody would be hanging their gear and working on their boats. Uh, when we launched, we would run them all the way down to the safe harbor down here, to the lagoon we call it, and we'd launch there, it's nice, nice bit on and it. it's nice and calm in there no worries about the westerly winds uh today that's not the case uh there you can't hardly drive a vehicle down there no more you get stuck definitely we're not taking no vehicle uh equipment down there uh, so we're having to launch our boats just basically in the open bay with no protection and even even in good weather a slight swell can really mess you up if you if you're working with a 32 foot boat and uh and trying to put it on a trailer or take it off the trailer because it don't take much variation to to mess things up uh and yeah we we've been down here for quite a while moving moving and taking and cleaning as much as possible but you know it, it takes money it takes time uh and yeah. So these things, so as scientists, we're really curious about the mechanisms leading to the erosion. As a community, they really want to deal with, well, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to handle uh, the fact that we're not going to be able to access some of our subsistence resources, that we're not going to be able to access the old village where many of the elders in the community uh, lived for many, many years. And so we're here to hopefully uh, provide some guidance, uh, do a lot of listening, and uh, help this community adapt to climate change. 